let's finally work on adding steering to this vehicle. Now, before we can do that, we first need to finish building these spindles. And to do that, we need to mount these brake calipers that I bought for this thing onto here. Basically, we just need to figure out how we're mounting the brake calipers on here. And then I can finish welding these things up. Alright, so the brake calipers are now installed on the spindles. I also finished welding the spindles together. Now, next thing we gotta do is we have to figure out how we're attaching the steering column to the frame. I was thinking about using bearings for this, but I think that's a little overkill. So I think let's try to use bushings instead. This is why I normally just cut it the bandsaw.
Alright, so I made this jig to hold this heim joint in place, so therefore I can figure out exactly where it needs to go, the height and everything. Here's also a piece of string that I have tied to the rear axle, like the very center of it. This is how I figure out my exact, uh, not kingpin angle, uh, Acker Ackerman steering. So if I can get that correct, and then, uh, then I can figure out how to tack the, this onto the spindle. And then we can do the one on the other side, and then that determines exactly where the steering column needs to go. Then we can do the, the tie rods, and then make sure that it's, this thing doesn't have any bump steer. We're probably going to have to adjust some things here and there to fine-tune it to where it doesn't have any bump steer. But, uh, yeah, I'm finding that making jigs to hold something in place just makes it a whole lot easier to do something like this. Instead of trying to have to hold it and eyeball it. You know, just, just make a jig to hold it in place and make it adjustable so therefore you can adjust exactly where it needs to go. Then you can simply just make a piece of metal that goes under here, touches the spindle, and just tack it in place. I do have a heater on. It's a bit cold in here. It's, my thermometer says it is 25 degrees in here, so it's a bit cold. I don't want to do any more of those propane heaters just because those things make me sick as a dog. It's because of the carbon monoxide that it produces or just the smell or I don't know what it is it's making me sick as a dog so I'm staying away, staying away from those propane heaters so right now I'm using this little this little heater that doesn't do much but you know it's better than nothing Alright, got the heim joints tacked in place. I'm probably going to have to fine tune and adjust this a little bit to get rid of any bump steer, but this is the general spot of where these heim joints need to go on these spindles. Now, next thing let's work on is making the tie rods. Now, I don't want to use, the, because these heim joints are designed to fit on one inch tubing, but I don't want to use one inch tubing for the, for the uh, tie rods uh, because the A-arms are made of one inch tubing, so I want to use something a little bit smaller. I was going to use 3 quarter inch tubing that I have, but this is actually too small. And we would have to machine so much material off of this to get this to fit on here. 
that would have almost no material left to weld on here and it would just weaken it too much. So let's actually use, let's use this. This is actually three quarter inch pipe. It's a little bit too thick, but you know what? It's gonna be a lot stronger and it's what I have that will work. So all we have to do is just machine these to, uh, to get this to fit onto here. Yeah, wearing a big coat in this thing is going to be a bit of an issue. So right now I need to figure out where the steering column needs to go as far as height-wise for... Um, yeah, am I going to have any legroom in here? Or... This is uh, kind of cramped in here, but I think I can make this work. Alright, it's got to go somewhere. Somewhere like that. Oh. I have honestly no idea how I'm going to fit a steering wheel. How am I going to fit pedals? I have no idea how this is going to work. It helps that I'm really short. So, progress on this thing has been a bit slow this week, I'll admit. Why has it been slow? It's because it has been freezing cold the last couple days. This is technically only the second snow of this year. I tried running the diesel heater yesterday, and for some reason it just wouldn't start. Come on! I don't know about that. <laughs> ah, it smells wonderful. Yeah, this will give me a really good headache later. Okay, maybe I'm better off with propane. I don't think this one's working. <laughs>
Uh, yeah, now it stinks in here. I gotta let it air out. It just kept sputtering on and off and smoking like crazy, so that didn't work. I'm too scared to run propane anymore just because that stuff gives me migraines and makes me throw up. So <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get work done in here, but it's just, it's really cold out. And But I did get the tie rods kind of mocked in place, and I'm just making sure that everything's working. I did have to bend these up just a little bit because when the suspension was all the way down the tie rods were hitting uh, right here of, on the A-arms so but right now it looks good doesn't look like it's got any bump steer or minimal bump steer at least and it's got almost perfect Ackerman steering now before I tack anything in place I just I want to make sure that my feet have enough room in here and it's not super compact because I was looking at this and realizing that worst case what I could do is I could move the tie rods instead of being the tie rods being on this side of the spindles they could be on this side which would mean that all this would be moved all the way up to here I would have to redo all the stuff we just did with getting all this in place but it may so right now just I want to make sure that I have enough room for my feet. So I put this piece of uh, plate on here. And also, do remember that when the fiberglass is on here, the hood is uh, at the same height as this, tu as this tubing. So I have to make sure that my feet are below this line. Yeah, I'll admit, this vehicle is probably the most compact I've ever made for the driver just because of the position of everything and how small the fiberglass body is. Also, I'm trying to have really long travel suspension in the front. That's kind of making this a bit of a challenge to make everything fit in here. So now, if I didn't have the problem of the fiberglass body, I could just have my feet right here. This is comfortable. This is not bad at all. But like I said, the fiberglass body is on here. So I have to make sure that my feet are below that. I could do that. That's not very comfortable. And also remember that I do want to have pedals for my feet and the pedals is what's going to be for the rear brakes. So therefore I can have cutting brakes. Basically, like I said before, you know, right foot, right, right tire, left foot, left tire. So if I <laughs> spread my legs a lot, <laughs> I could do this, and there is kind of enough room for a steering wheel, kind of. So this isn't super uncomfortable, it allows for steering. I can actually move this a little bit further down to make a little bit more room. My feet are underneath the hood, there's room for pedals and everything, so I think, uh, I think this will work. It's not the most comfortable, but I think I can make that work. So, I do believe that this setup will kind of work, so I guess let's, uh, let's tack the tie rods to the heim joints, and then we can double check to make sure we don't have any bump steer, and then we have to figure out how we're mounting this side of the uh, steering column. very hard to do with gloves on. So...
Now, for the moment of truth, to see if this has any bump steer or not, so I put a vice clamp on the steering column, so therefore it can't uh, turn. Now, this is the very top of the suspension travel. This is the very bottom. And it's actually, look at that. That's a, uh, that's not, that's not, I mean, it's not completely, you know, stationary. It does move just a tiny, tiny little bit, but for the amount of suspension travel we have, I say that is not bad. It does kind of move between here and here, but that's at the very top of the travel. So I'd say that's good enough. That is an acceptable amount of bump steer. Sweet. That was really making me nervous to be able to make this setup work and not have bump steer, so it's kind of a miracle that it actually works. So we need to figure out where the steering wheel is going to go before we can finalize the top mount for the steering column because we may have to adjust it a little bit to make it to where we can have uh, room for the steer. We're probably not going to use the steering wheel. I'm probably going to make something kind of similar to this, except just chop the top, chop the bottom, and just have kind of like the side handles. We are going to have to have a thumb throttle and a front brake. On the, th This is why I had to do this kind of steering. And I have seen some channels make this mistake of uh, using a rack and pinion while also having controls on the steering wheel. You cannot have controls on the steering wheel and use a rack and pinion because with a rack and pinion, it forces you to turn a lot more than like an ATV where you can just do this and you know have controls and so therefore you have to have these kind this kind of steering and not have a rack and pinion if you are going to have controls on your steering wheel so I may have to fiddle around with this a little bit more to get it to where it's a good ratio of steering we don't want this too touchy too twitchy because of how fast this thing's gonna go but we also want to make sure that I can do locked easily lock to lock without having to really, you know, I'm probably, yeah, probably have to uh, fine tune this a little bit, but at least it doesn't have bump steer, which is a miracle. So now I'm probably just going to save all, all that for next video of this project. I was gonna, wanting to get a lot more done in this video, but this week was the one of the coldest weeks we've had in a very long time. So progress on this thing was a bit slow, but uh, yeah, tomorrow or next week is going to be a lot warmer. Which is actually tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's Monday. So next week's gonna be a lot warmer, so hopefully I'll be able to get a little bit more done in the next video of this project. But at least we got the steering. This was kind of like a hard challenge to make sure that it can uh doesn't have any bump steer, but also make it to where it works. And yeah, we're tomorrow next or next video we're gonna have to figure out how to get the steering wheel in place, how we're building the steering wheel and all that kind of stuff, and then we can finalize the frame and do all that kind of stuff. But uh, anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.